Hello. Dear students, my name is Philip Fumi Abasa. I'm a teacher and I teach economics. As you know, students and teachers alike are all home now because of COVID-19. But we have to be productive, so I'm using this opportunity to try to reach out to the students and see if this will help. I will also encourage you to stay home. But while you're home, you have to pray to God. You have to observe all the protocols that are being prescribed by the health experts. Pray regularly, exercise your body, and as well as try to do some house chores and study. That will help you. Okay? And uh, today I will start with production possibility table and curve. And because of the size of some videos, when you are trying to upload and download, it creates a lot of problem for us. I'm going to make the videos short so that we can easily download them. I hope so. But what are we going to realize at the end of this particular series? You should be able to use the production possibility frontier to explain some economic fundamentals that you have learned. That is scarcity, choice, opportunity cost, efficiency. You should be able to say what the production possibility table is and what the curve is as well. And then draw the table and use it to explain the relationship between the goods you are going to produce. Thank you very much. So let's move to ask ourselves one or two questions which will help us to explain the concept. What is production possibility table? And as you can see, it's already on the board. Production possibility table is a table drawn to show the combination of two goods that can be produced by a country given its resources and level of technology at the time. Then let's just go to production possibility curve. It's a line or curve drawn to show the combinations of two goods that can be produced by a country given its resources and level of technology at the time. So as you can see clearly, there's not much difference between the table and the curve. There's not much difference. But when you are asked what is production possibility table, make sure you talk about table and not a curve. That is very important. All right. So you can see from the definition that I've underlined uh, some words. But let me add this one, two commodities or two goods. Why two commodities? We mention two commodities because of simplicity, in order that you can explain easily the theory and the concept, we say two commodities, it's an assumption. Because in reality we know that countries produce more than two commodities. But in order that we can explain this quite easily, we assume that we are producing two commodities. And you need resources in order to produce. That is why resources is in the definition. Resources are inputs or factors of production that are used in the production of goods and services. So you can't output if you don't input. You can't produce if you don't use resources. Okay, technology is an innovative way of doing things. And so technology is very important. Technology can help you produce more or less. Okay, time is key because without time, you know, at a time you can have so much, at another time you can have less. So anytime you are trying to define these two concepts, make sure that you add time. You add time. I, I, I know that the time issue will come up later. Okay, so there's not that much difference between the table and the curve. But just make sure that when you are defining, you put in the key words. Thank you very much. So from the definition, we move on to draw the table. I've put up here a very simple table. My assumption is that the country is Ghana, assuming that Ghana is producing two commodities, cocoa and cars. Yes, so that is what we have, cocoa and cars. All right, so, and then we have combinations. Combinations are choices available for the country. 
or options available for the country. Because we can't have everything at the same time, we have to make choice. We have to make choice. So the country can make a choice of combination A. The country makes that choice. The output of cocoa or the production of cocoa will stand at zero tons, whilst cars will be 50. The implication is that the country is using all its resources to produce only cars. That means that the resources the country has, the technology the country has, is both a channel into the production of only cars. That is what combination A is telling you. What about choice B? If the country chooses to produce at B, the country will have 20 tons of the cocoa and then 40 units of the cars. Note, the country cannot have the chance of producing combination A and B at the same time. It's not possible. Remember, I mentioned time factor. At the same time, you can't have the production of A and B. No way. You can only have one at a time. Take note of this. Very important. Very, very important. Take note of that. Okay, so let me ask you this question. When the country chooses combination T, what will be the quantities of cocoa and the quantities of cars? Surely your answer should be 35 tons of cocoa and 20 units of the cars. I believe that you are not tempted to say 35 and 20 and leave it like that. Don't. Don't be tempted to say, say so. This is because 35 and 20 can be anything. It can be 35 cars, it can be 35 machines, it can be 35 shoes, 35 uh, whatever. So anytime you are giving an answer, make sure that you look at the units as well. So your answer should be 35 tons of cocoa, not just 35. And then 20 units of cars. The unit here can be anything. It can be 20 Benz cars. It can be 20 BMW cars. Okay, all right. What about, what about combination E? When the country chooses combination E, the country will produce 38 tons of the cocoa and zero units of the cars. Now there is an implication here. E is also telling us that the country is using all its resources and the level of technology to produce only cocoa and nothing of the cars. That is what it implies. Okay, very good. Let's continue. Look at my hand as I move my hand down. Okay, then look at the values of the cocoa, the tons of cocoa. You realize as I move my hand down, it is increasing 0, 20, 30, 35, and 38. Compare that to the cars as I run my hand down. Surely you will notice that the values of the cars is falling. It's 50, 40, 30, 20, and 0. This describes what we call a relationship between the units of the cars and the tons of the cocoa. And the name of this relationship, we say, is a negative relationship or an inverse relationship or an indirect relationship. So what is inverse relationship, negative relationship? Negative relationship exists when there is an increase in one of the variables that leads to a fall in the value of the other variable. Simply put, when two things, items, friends are in a relationship, and they move in different directions, rising and falling. We say that there is a negative relationship between those two variables, friends or things. 
So I can uh, conveniently write that. There is a negative relationship between the output of cocoa and cats. Okay, there is a negative relationship between the two. I think we'll end this one here and continue with the next video. Thank you very much.